due to the COVID-19 Welcome to our online Hello nurses, midwives, and top notchers. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So thank you po sa lahat naman nag-subscribe sa akin channel. And sa mga hindi pa po nakakapag-subscribe, just click the button below to subscribe and click the bell button for more video updates para ikaw po ang unang-unang makakapanood ng mga videos na aking ina-upload. Okay? So ang ating pag-uusapan po sa ngayon is all about your obstetrics and gynecology. It's all about your Nagel's rule, the McDonald's rule, and other obstetrical computation na lumalabas po sa inyong po exam. So, ang pag-usapan po natin una ay itong si Nagel's Rule. Ito yung rule na ginagamit natin para malaman natin kung kailan manganganak or kung kailan yung ating estimated na due date ng kanyang pregnancy. So, ayon sa ating Nagel's Rule, kailangan daw alam ng babae ang kanyang first day of your last menstrual period. Kasi yun po ay kailangan natin, napakalaga po yung ating, uh, yung ating first day of your LMP or your last menstrual period para ma-determine natin kung kailan yung kanyang estimated date of delivery. Okay? So, pag alam ng babae ang kanyang first day of your last menstrual period, so yun yung kukunin natin. So, example, pag sinabi sa situation na siya ay niregla nung uh, August 19 to August 23 So disregard mo yung August 23 Kasi ang kailangan mo lang dito is yung first day of LMP Which is yung August 19 Example lang po yun So pag nadetermine mo ng ating first day of your LMP Pwede mo nang i-compute yung, uh, yung kanyang EDC So ang rule sa ating Nagels The rule in your Nagels is just subtract 3 months from the month of your LMP Then add 7 days from the day of your LMP and add another one year for the year of your LMP. So, yun na yung magiging EDC niya or ADD. But take note that most women give birth seven days before to seven days after their computed EDD or your ADC. Okay? So, yun po yung ating Nagel's Rule. So, just subtract three months from the month of your LMP, then add seven days from the day of your LMP, and another one year for the year of your LMP. Ang tatandaan nyo lang na formula sa ating Nagel's Rule is minus 3 plus 7 plus 1. Again, so minus 3 sa month plus 7 sa day and plus 1 sa kanyang year of your LMP. So minus 3 plus 7 plus 1. Or you can just do this, okay? So if the LMP of the woman falls between the month of January to March, use the formula plus 9 plus 7. Para mas mapabilis din po yan, shortcut na po natin to plus 9 plus 7 kapag ang LMP niya ay pumapal or nasa between ng January to March yung buwan. Okay, again, so example dito, sabi dito, if the first day of a woman LMP was on January 22, 2020, when is her EDD? So, January to March, ang, gag ang gagamitin mo na formula is plus 9 plus 7. Okay, so para hindi po tayo malito, plus 9 plus 7 kapag ang kanyang LMP ay January to March. So, January 22, 2020 is converted as 0122 2020. So ang ating formula kapag January to uh, January to March ang kanyang LMP ay plus +9 plus +7. So yun yung ating formula. So yun yung ating uh, ilalagay diyan. So 1 plus +9 then 22 plus +7. So 1 plus +9 is 10 then 22 plus +7 is 29. Okay? So ibig po sabihin niyan, so manganganak si nanay or yung babae dito ng October 29, 2020 Again, so October 29, 2020 Yung kanyang expected date of delivery Bakit? Kasi just add 9 and add 7 So add 9 sa month Then add 7 sa kanyang day of LMP Then yun na yung ADC niya So 1 plus 9 is 10 22 plus 7 is 29 So October 29, 2020 Yung kanyang ADC Then next, we have here another situation. Sabi dito, pag ang given LMP naman ng babae ay March 29, 2020, kailan naman po siya mga anak, okay? So again, so sabi natin kanina, for January to March LMP, use plus 9 plus 7 as a shortcut formula, okay? So 3 plus 9, then 29 plus 7. So 3 plus 9 is 12, then 29 plus 7 is 12. 36. Okay? So, bring down yung 2020 kasi nasa December pa rin siya ng ating 
uh, year 2020. So, 1236-2020 yung lumabas sa ating computation dito. So, cannot be kasi wala namang 36 days yung ating December sa ating 2020 calendar. So, ilang days lang ba ang December? So, ang December natin ay meron, uh, meron lang siyang 31 days. So, ibababa natin yung ating, uh, yung ating uh, days of December sa baba ng ating 36 which is 31 days lang ang ating December. So, so ibababa natin doon sa baba ng 36 yung ating 31. So, i-co-compute na natin siya. Then, mag-add tayo ng 1 sa ating sa ating uh, sa baba ng 12 kasi lumagpas na po tayo sa ating buwan ng December. So, ibig sabihin niyan, pag lumagpas ka na sa buwan ng December, lumagpas ka na rin sa taon 2020. So, another 1 sa ating 2020. So, lalabas dyan na 12 plus 1 is 13 at pang 13 mat yung January. So, 1 na po yun. Then, 36 minus 31 is 5. Okay? So, 2020 plus 1 is 2021. So, manganganak yung nanay na merong LMP ng March 29, 2020 at January 5, 2021. Okay? So, manganganak ang nanay January 5, 2021. Then, next, but if the LMP falls between April to December, mag-stick po tayo sa ating formula ng Nagels na minus 3 plus 7 plus 1. One. Again, pag ito ay nasa April to December ang kanyang LMP, stick po tayo sa ating formula na minus 3 plus 7 plus 1. Example, okay? So, June 10, 2020 ang kanyang LMP, okay? So, 6, 10, 2020. So, minus 3 plus 7 plus 1. So, 6 minus 3 is 3. 10 plus 7 is 17. 2020 plus 1 is 2021. So, that is, uh, that is uh, 6 minus 3 is So, that is March 17, 2021. So, mga nganak po March 17, 2021. Then, next, we have your another situation. Sabi dito, the client arrives at the prenatal clinic for the first prenatal assessment. So, the client tells the nurse that the first day of her LMP was October 20, 2019. So, using Nagel's rule, the nurse determines the estimated date of birth is which date. Okay? So, October is, uh, October is 10. So, 10-20-2019 yung ating uh, yung ating uh, uh, yung ating i-co-compute. So, the LMP is 10-20-2019. So, as a rule in your Nagels, minus 3 plus 7 tayo. So, minus 3 sa ating 10, plus 7 sa 20, then plus 1 sa 19. Okay? So, 10 minus 3 is 7, 20 plus 7 is 27, and 19 plus 1 is 2020, okay? So, mga anak po yung ating uh, patient dito or client dito sa July 27, 2020. Again, mga anak po siya July 27, 2020. Okay? So, letter boy is the correct answer. The next, another situation here we have your during a prenatal visit, a patient tells you that her last menstrual period was May 21, 2016. Based on the Nagel's rule, when is the estimated due date of her baby? So, May is 5, okay? 21, 2016. So, 5, 21, 2016. So, as a rule in Nagel's, kapag ito'y April to December, minus 3 plus 7 plus 1 po tayo. Minus 3 sa month, plus 7 sa day, and plus 1 sa year. So, 5, 5 minus 3 is 2, okay? Then, 21 plus 7 is 28. Okay, and 2016 plus 1 is 2017. So, the estimated due date of your patient here is February 28, 2017. So, letter C is the correct answer. Then, last, we have your last example for your Nagel's rule. We have her during a prenatal visit, a patient tells you that her last menstrual period was on August 15, 2016. Mm -hmm. So, based on the Nagel's rule, when is the estimated due date of her baby? A. May 24, 2016 B. April 4, 2017 C. May 4, 2017 or D. May 22, 2017 Okay? So, ang given na LMP dito is August 15, 2016 So, August is 8, 15, then 16 So, 8, 15, 16 So, minus 3 plus 7 plus 1 So, 8 minus 3 is 5 15 plus 7 is 22 and 2016 plus 1 is 2017. And the correct answer here is letter D, May 22, 2017 kasi August 15, 2016. So, August is 8 minus 3 is 5. 15 plus 7 is 22. 2016 plus 1 is 2017.
The next topic is your age of gestation determination or your EGA or yung tatawag natin na estimated gestational age of your pregnancy. So, meron po tayo dito mga common na ginagamit. So, number one, we have your McDonald's rule. Number two is the LMP and the date of your visit. And number three is the Bartholomew's rule. So, let's talk about first your McDonald's rule. So, pag sinabi po natin McDonald's rule, McDonald's rule is the measuring of your uterine fundal height from the symphysis pubis to the top of the uterine fundus. So, between 18 and 32 weeks of gestation, the fundal height measurements should approximate with the gestational age of your pregnancy. So, ibig pong sabihin yan, between 18 to 32 weeks of your pregnancy, okay, correlational na po ang kanilang, ang kanyang uh, height of the fundus to its gestational age. Again, so, Kailan daw magiging correlational ang kanyang uh, fundic height sa kanyang gestational age? That is between 18 to 32 weeks of gestation. So, in McDonald's rule, your first action is to empty the bladder of the woman first. Okay? So, your first action is to empty the bladder of the, uh, the patient or the mother. Then, position the woman lying on her back with knees slightly flexed. Then, take note, use your pliable tape measure or the non-stretchable tape measure and use it in center. Meter, okay? So, ang formula po natin sa ating McDonald's rule, kung gusto mong malaman ang kanyang age of gestation in weeks, ang gagawin po natin dito is fundic height in centimeter multiplied by 8 divided by 7 and that is the weeks of gestation of your pregnancy. Again, ulitin ko. So, ang pag-measure sa kanyang uh, fundic height is by centimeter. Okay? So, the fundic height in centimeter is multiplied by 8 then divide it by 7, then the answer is the age of gestation in weeks. Okay? Pero kung gusto mo namang malaman ang kanyang age of gestation in months, ang ating formula, na, uh, ang formula naman po natin dito is your fundic height in centimeter multiplied by 2 and divide it by 7. Okay? So, yun po yung ating mga constant formula in your McDonald's rule. Okay? So, fundic height in centimeter times 8 divided by 7 and that is the weeks of gestation of her pregnancy. And, fundic height in centimeter multiplied by 2 and divided by 7, that is the months of gestation of her pregnancy. Okay? So, take note, kapag mas malaki ang yuto, ang, uh, mas malaki ang na-measure mong fundic height sa kanyang age of gestation, baka ito yung mga reason kung bakit meron siyang larger than date uterus. Okay? So, the causes of a larger than date uterus, we have your 5M mnemonics. Okay? Yung 5Ms natin, yun yung mnemonics natin para matandaan natin na ito yung managkukos ng malaking uterus during your pregnancy period. Yung kanyang age of gestation ay hindi akma sa laki ng kanyang chan. Okay? So, we have your 5Ms. M for your maternal hydramnios or masyadong madami ang kanyang amniotic fluid. So, lumalagpas na po yan ng more than 1,500 ml, like 2,000 ml amniotic fluid. So, that is your maternal hydramnios. Okay? So, pag merong maternal hydramnios, yung ating uh, patient suspect for your GI abnormalities of the baby. Like your fito, uh, like your uh, tracheoesophageal fistula or the esophageal atresia. Okay? So, letter M, we have also your molar pregnancy or yung nanay ay merong H-mol pregnancy. Kaya masyadong malaki ang kanyang chan kasi molar ang pregnancy niya. And letter M, multiple pregnancy. So, hindi lang nag-iisa ang baby na kinikerry ni nanay, kundi dalawa or tatlo ang laman ng kanyang chan. And letter M, macrosomic baby or yung tatawag natin na large for gestational age baby. Yan yung mga common na pinapanganak ng mga nanay na merong gestational diabetes mellitus. And letter M, the miscalculated AOG. So, yun po yung mga reason kung bakit meron po tayong larger than date uterus. We have your 5M mnemonics. And how about naman kapag sinabi naman nating smaller than date uterus? Ano yung mga possible na causes naman ng smaller than date uterus? So, we have your mnemonics still here. We have your small mnemonics. Okay? S, baka naman nagdadala si nanay ng SGA baby or small for gestational age na baby or yung baby na merong intrauterine growth restriction or yung IUGR. Okay? So, yung IUGR kasi mapapansin mo hindi lumalaki yung chan ni nanay. Ganun din sa miss abortion. Okay? Sa miss abortion, mas maliit yung chan ni nanay compared sa kanyang age of gestation. And sa ating miss abortion, minsan ay nadedetect natin na wala ng fetal heartbeat yung kanyang pagbubuntis. And letter A, baka meron tayong anomalous baby. Letter L, the length is miscalculated. And L, 
low amniotic fluid or baka merong oligohydramnios naman si baby. At kapag oligohydramnios yung ating condition, suspect for your renal abnormality of the fetus. Okay? Baka meron po siyang renal agenesis or may problema sa kanyang urine production. Kasi yung ating amniotic fluid ay meron din siyang uh, contribution from the fetal urine. So, yung ating uh, amniotic fluid ay galing din sa ihi ni baby. Then next, we have also your determination of the age of gestation or estimated gestational age of your pregnancy by means of your date of checkup and your LMP, okay? So example in this situation, a pregnant mother with LMP of April 27 came for a clinic visit on August 15. So the mother is how many weeks now pregnant? So ilang weeks na daw po siyang pregnant kung ang kanyang LMP ay noong April 27 at ang kanyang visit ay noong August 15. So, ilang weeks na si nanay na buntis noong August 15 or noong date of checkup niya. So, dito para malaman natin ang kanyang uh, age of gestation, kailangan bilangin mo lahat ng araw na lumipas mula noong kanyang first day of LMP hanggang sa araw ng kanyang checkup. Then, i-divide mo siya sa 7 para makuha mo kung ilang weeks na po siyang buntis. So, bibilangin natin kung ilang araw ang lumipas from April 27 to August 15. So, April 27 yung kanyang LMP. So, ilang days ba ang April? So, April is 30 days. So, April is uh, 30 days. So, 30 days of April minus 27, that is 3 days. So, 3 days ang natitira sa araw ng April. So, 3 days ang April. So, 31 days naman yung May, then 30 days naman ang June, and 31 days naman ang July, then 15 days naman ang August sa kanyang pagbisita. Bakit natin na uh, binibilang yung ating days of your uh, days of your May, June, July, hanggang sa araw ng kanyang check-up? Kasi yun yung mga lumipas na araw mula sa kanyang first day of LMP. So, bibilangin mo yun. So, sumatotal mo po yung ating days mula sa kanyang LMP hanggang sa kanyang date of check up. So, April 27 yung kanyang LMP. So, since April is 30 days, so 30 days minus 27 is 3 days. So, meron siyang tatlong araw na 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 natapos sa month of your April. So, so 3 days of your April, then nal nalagpasan din niya yung 31 days ng May, then nalagpasan din niya yung 30 days ng June, then nalagpasan din niya yung 31 days ng July, then nalagpasan din niya yung unang 15 days ng August kasi yun na yung kanyang date of check-up. Okay, so mag-stop po tayo sa ating counting sa date of check-up. Mag-start ka sa day of LMP, then mag-stop ka sa date of check-up. Okay, so kung i-compute natin, 3, 31, 30, 31, plus 15. So, i-add po, po natin yon 3 plus 31 plus 30 plus 31 plus 15 is 110 days po lahat yun, okay? So, so meron po tayong 110 days na nakalipas mula ng kanyang LMP hanggang sa kanyang check-up date. So, 110 divided by 7, okay? So, pag i manual computation po natin siya, okay? So, 110 divided by 7 is... 14 weeks, okay? So, 14 yung lalabas na answer natin. So, 14 weeks and 2 days po yan. Pero pag uh, i-compute mo po siya sa calculator, ang lalabas po dun is 110 divided by 7, ang lalabas po dun is 15.7, okay? So, kailangan din natin uh, i-compute yan sa ating calculator or uh, tingnan natin kung uh, meron bang discrepancy between sa calculation natin sa calculator at saka sa ating uh, manual computation, okay? So, kung ano yung pinakamalapit na nasa board exam question or sa choices, yun yung ating isasagot, okay? So, yun po yung ating pagkuha ng ating age of gestation of your pregnancy from the day of your LMP up to the date of your checkup. Then, next rule is the Bartholomew's Rule, okay? So, pag sinabi po naman natin Bartholomew's Rule, it calculates the estimated age of gestation or the AOG of the fetus in relation to the height of the fundus, okay? So, according to this method, all you need to remember are the three landmarks of the body. So, we have your symphysis pubis, the umbilicus or the navel, and the siphoid process or your breastbone. Okay, again, so we have our three landmarks in your Bartholomew's rule na tatandaan natin. We have our sux mnemonics, so S-U-X, symphysis pubis, umbilicus or the navel, and the siphoid process or the siphi sternum. Okay, so yun po yung ating tatandaan na landmarks natin for your uh, estimation of the gestation in the relation of your height of your fundus or the fundic height. So, alamin natin kung nasa na yung kanyang fundic height, kung nasa tapat na po ba ito ng symphysis pubis, ng umbilicus, or ng kanyang siphoid process.
So, in your Bartholomew's Rule of Four, we have your 12 weeks kapag uh, ang kanyang fundicite ay nasa level of symphysis pubis. Okay? So, if the fundicite of the mother is at the level of the symphysis pubis, the weeks of gestation of her pregnancy is at 12 weeks. Okay? At kung nasa just above the symphysis pubis naman ang ginamit ng board exam, still that is 12 weeks. Okay? So, kahit sabihin niyang just above the symphysis pubis, do not answer 16 weeks. Kasi still 12 weeks po yung sagot natin doon. Or, you can also uh, you can also answer 12 weeks kapag ang nasa board exam is it just lies over the symphysis pubis. So, pag symphysis pubis pa rin ang nakikita mo, that is 12 weeks. Okay? Because at 12 weeks, the uterus will rise and out of the pelvic cavity because the uterus is considered as an abdominal organ at 12 weeks. So pagtanungin ka sa board exam kung kailan palpable na yung kanyang uh, yung kanyang fundus, okay? Your answer is 12 weeks. Why? Because at 12 weeks pregnancy, the uterus is considered now as an abdominal organ. Again, so pag ang sinabi sa board exam, the fundic height of the mother is at the level of the symphysis pubis, your answer is 12 weeks. Or, pag sinabi sa board exam, the fundic height of the mother is just above the symphysis pubis, still that is 12 weeks. Or, pag sinabi sa board exam na the, the fundic height of the mother just lies over the symphysis pubis, still that is your 12 weeks. Okay? And at 12 weeks, the uterus rises out of the pelvic cavity. So, palpable na po siya as an abdominal organ at 12 weeks kasi it rises out of the pelvic cavity. So, kailan mo naman pwedeng isagot ang 16 weeks? Okay? So, you can answer 16 weeks in the board exam if Ang sinabi doon is midway or between the symphysis pubis and the umbilicus, okay? So, if the fundic height of the mother is midway or halfway or between the symphysis pubis and the umbilicus or the navel, that is 16 weeks. So, dapat mabasa mo yung word na midway, halfway or between siya ng symphysis pubis at saka umbilicus. Tsaka mo lang isasagot yung 16 weeks. Malinaw po tayo, okay? So, we have 20 to 22 weeks naman siya or 20 to 22 weeks naman na po siya. If the fundic height is at the level of the navel or at the level of the umbilicus. Kapag nasa tapat na po siya ng pusod ni nanay, that is 20 weeks. Or pag walang 20 weeks sa choices, you can also answer 22 weeks. But generally in the board exam, 20 weeks is at the level of your umbilicus. And that is a common board question. So wag niyong pong kakalimutan yan. So pag ang fundic height ni nanay or yung fundus ni nanay is nasa umbilicus area na siya. Or at the level of the navel or the uh, level of the umbilicus because your answer is 20 weeks or 5 months pregnant na si nanay. And kapag meron ka nakitang midway of the uh, midway or between of your umbilicus and the cyphoid process, ang sagot naman po dun is 28 weeks na siya or 7 months na siyang pregnant. Again, pag ang nakita mo sa board exam is midway between the umbilicus and the cyphoid process, the pregnancy in weeks is 28 weeks and that is 8 months, uh, that is 7 months na po si nanay. Again, 28 weeks is 7 month pregnant na po si nanay. And, if the fundus or the fundic height of the mother is at the level of the cyphoid process or the breastbone or the cyphoid sternum, okay, the mother is now at her 36 to 38 weeks pregnancy period, okay? Pero pagdating ng 40 weeks, bababa ulit yung kanyang chan at the level of 32 weeks kasi nagkakaroon na po tayo ng process na tinatawag natin na lightening process. Again, ulitin ko, pag 12 weeks, that is at the level of the symphysis pubis or just above the symphysis pubis or it just lies over the symphysis pubis because at 12 weeks, the uterus rises out of the pelvic cavity. And at 12 weeks, the uterus is considered now as abdominal organ, okay? So, 16 weeks ang isasagot mo sa board exam if the fundic height is located midway or halfway or between siya ng symphysis pubis and the umbilicus, okay? And 20 weeks naman ang isasagot natin sa board exam if the fundus of the mother is located at the level of the navel or at the level of the umbilicus, okay? So, isasagot naman natin ang 28 weeks or 7 months na siyang buntis kapag ang nabasa mo naman is between siya ng umbilicus and cyphoid process, okay? So, yun po yung ating uh, 7 months or 28 weeks, okay? So, pag ito naman ay nasa 36 to 38 weeks na, okay, the fundus is at the level of the cyphoid process. So, makikita natin sa ating illustration, kapag, uh, kapag ito ay less than 12 weeks pa lang na pregnant, 
that is below the symphysis pubis pa. Example, 8 weeks pa lang siya, 9 weeks pa lang po siya. So, below the symphysis pubis pa lang po yun, okay? Pero pag siya ay 12 weeks na, that is at the level of the symphysis pubis na po siya, okay? So, yung 16 weeks naman po natin, that is between the symphysis pubis and your umbilicus, okay? Nasa gitna po siya ng 12 at 20, kaya siya between ng symphysis pubis at saka ng umbilicus. At pagdating ng 20 weeks pregnancy ni nanay, that is at the level of your umbilicus kasi buntis siya, kasi nasa 20 weeks, 5 months na po siya kapag located ng fundus niya sa kanyang puso, okay? So, yun po yung ating tatandaan sa ating Bartholomew's Rule, common board questions po lahat ang ating nasa Bartholomew's Rule, okay? So, 12 weeks kapag nasa level of the symphysis pubis or just lies over the symphysis pubis or just above the symphysis pubis, okay? 16 weeks kapag midway or between siya ng symphysis pubis at saka ng umbilicus ni nanay, okay? 20 weeks naman po siya kapag at the level of the umbilicus na siya or at the level of the navel na siya ni nanay. And 24 weeks is just above your umbilicus. Then, between naman ng umbilicus at saka ng inyong cyphoid process is your 28 weeks. Pag walang 28 weeks, you can answer 26 weeks, okay? So, at the level of your cyphoid process, you can now answer 36 weeks. So, yung 38 weeks naman, bababa na ulit siya because of your lightening process. Okay? So, tatanda po natin yan. The uterus becomes an abdominal organ at 12 weeks. Because at 12 weeks, the uterus rises out of the pelvis. So, pag wala pang 12 weeks, ang sagot natin dyan is below the symphysis pubis pa. Kasi nasa pelvic cavity pa, kapag 8 weeks, 9 weeks, 7 weeks pa siyang pregnant. Okay, so ulit-ulitin natin. So, pag symphysis pubis, 12 weeks po yan. Kapag navel or umbilicus, 20 weeks po yan. And kapag ito yung cyphoid process or the cyphoid sternum, that is 36 to 38 weeks na po yan. Okay? Pag ito ay 40 weeks na or nasa term pregnancy na po si nanay, yung kanyang fundicate ay bababa below your cyphoid process. Kasi nangyari na po yung tinatawag natin na lightening or the dropping of the fetus. Okay? So, yun po yung ating Bartholomew's Rule. Always remember your three landmarks of the body, the symphysis pubis, the umbilicus, and the cyphoid process. Then next, after ng ating Bartholomew's Rule, let's talk about your Hayes' Rule. Okay? So, pag sinabi naman po natin Hayes' Rule, Hayes' Rule is used to determine the length of the fetus in centimeter. Okay? So, the Hayes' Rule in the first five months, okay, it measures the crown to heel length of the baby in centimeter. So, paano po bang pag-compute natin sa Hayes' Rule? Okay? So, in Hayes' Rule, for the first five months of your pregnancy, just multiply the month by itself or square mo lang yating month. Okay? Yun na yung centimeter in length ng baby niya for the first five months. Okay? For the next 5 months to 10 months or 6 months to 10 months, just multiply the month by 5. At yun na yung length ni baby by centimeter. Okay? So, example. So, for the first 1 to 5 months, just multiply the month by itself or square mo yung month natin. So, pag 1 month na siya, 1 month, uh, one month times 1 is 1 cmc baby. 2 months times 2 is 4 cmc baby. 3 months times 3 9 cm naman si baby. And kapag 4 months na siyang buntis times 4, that is 16 centimeter long baby. At kapag 5 months times 5, that is 25 centimeter long baby. So take note, so anything less than 20 centimeter fetus is considered as an abortus. Okay, abortus po yun kapag less than 20 centimeter. So pwede pang maabort yung baby. Pero pag ito ay 25 centimeter and above, no, that is viable baby na po siya. Okay, so for the next 6 to 10 months, ang gagawin naman po natin dyan is just multiply the month by 5. So, pag 6 months pregnant na si nanay, just multiply it by 5. So, 6 months time uh, times 5 is 30 centimeter long na si baby. Okay? 7 months times 5, 35 centimeter na yung baby sa loob ng kanyang chan. And, pag 8 months pregnant na si nanay, 8 months times 5, 40 centimeter long na si baby. And, kapag 9 months times 5, 45 centimeter long na si baby. And, kapag term na si baby, 10 months times 5, that is 50 centimeter na si baby. So, take note that the normal centimeter of your newborn should be between 45 centimeter to 55 centimeter. So, an average Filipino newborn is uh, 50 centimeter, okay? So, 50 centimeter po siya. That is the average length of your 
newborn. Again, so pag sinabi natin Hayes' rule for the first 5 months, just square the month. So, 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 4, and 5 times 5. For the next 6 to 10 months, just uh, multiply the month by 5. Okay, so 6 times 5, 7 times 5, 8 times 5, 9 times 5, and 10 times 5. So, ganun lang po kasimple yung ating Hayes' rule. Okay? So, the next rule natin is your Johnson's rule. So, pag sinabi naman po natin Johnson's rule, Johnson's rule is the estimation of your fetal weight in grams which can only be used for a cephalic or vertex presentation baby. Pag ito ay breech baby, hindi mo pa pwedeng gamitin yung ating Johnson's rule. Okay? So, pwede mo lang gamitin ang Johnson's rule, Johnson's rule kapag ang baby ay nasa cephalic or vertex presentation. So, paano po ba itong Johnson's rule? So, ang Johnson's rule... Kapag ang baby ay nasa negative station pa po siya, okay, i-measure mo yung fundic height ni nanay din. Uh, yung fundic height niya in centimeter, i-minus mo siya ng 12, then i-multiply mo siya by 155. So, fundic height in centimeter minus 12 times 155. Okay, so yun na yung ating uh, estimated weight ni baby in grams kapag nasa negative station pa po siya. At kapag nasa positive station na sa baby, so ang Johnson's rule naman po natin dyan is fundic height in centimeter minus 11 multiplied by 155 and that is the estimated fetal weight in grams in your positive station baby. Okay? So yun po yung ating Johnson's rule. So again, so yun po yung ating mga common obstetrical formula and computations na ginagamit natin sa ating prenatal visits and check-up ng mga nanay. So meron po tayo doon na uh, obstetrical history taking, the GPT palm. We have also your uh, Nagel's rule. We have also your uh, AOG determination by your McDonald's rule, the Bartholomew's rule, and the date of your check-up of your mother. And meron din tayo dito tinatawag natin na Hayes' rule at saka Johnson's rule. Okay? <music>